Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this session of Scoop School. Nice to have you here. Steve Christensen's my name. The ice cream bloke, self-appointed headmaster, best-selling author. Uh, the list goes on. Well, actually, the list doesn't go on and on. It stops right there. <laughs> thank you and welcome to this session of Scoop School. Do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Dippin' Flavors. You've heard me talk about them before right here in the STL, Dippin' Flavors. Now, let me tell you about Jimmy Stutz. Jimmy Stutz runs the show there. Jimmy Stutz is a keto master. Jimmy Stutz is basically a shadow of his former self because he's right down the line on the keto. So anyway, call Jimmy, call Ryan. Anything to do with toppings, flavors, bases, sprinkles, the whole box and dice, dippinflavors.com. The link is down below. Just give it a bit of a click. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now, great question today from one of our viewers. Love viewer questions. Do we love viewer questions, Madeline? We love viewer questions. So, question today. Glasses up. Where are we gonna go? Uh, we'll go. We could do a double whip crack. <laughs> we could do a whip. We could do a whip crack. Anyway, that's enough shenanigans. Sleepy TF. Thanks for tuning in, my man or woman. Hi Steve, just wondered how you'd set up an ice cream mix in a slushy machine. Mine has an ice cream setting for up to minus 10 temperatures, but not sure what to add to create it. Well, Sleepy TF, great question. Um, so there are two types of slush machines. A couple of things we need to determine. We're gonna, we're gonna basically deconstruct this, uh, uh, this question. This is a clear bowl machine. Um, and it basically is called a clear bowl machine because it, well, it has a clear bowl on the top. Now, interestingly, the way these work, this is an Elmeco uh, clear bowl machine. It has an auger that basically rotates the product along the bottom and an auger that rotates it up the top. So you've got this kind of constant rotation going on. And that's important because the only freezing surface or the evaporator, what we call it, is actually on the bottom. So if I take this uh, bowl off, um, what you can see here is basically, this is what, it, what we call our evaporator. Uh, it's the freezing surface. And it's very hard to put ice cream in here because ice cream needs that constant process of being against an evaporator wall or a freezing cylinder wall in order to scrape the dendrites or the frozen ice cream particles off the evaporator wall and basically fold it in on itself. So what you have here is a clear bowl machine that obviously has only half a barrel when it comes to a comparison between this and a soft serve or an ice cream machine. So it's very difficult to do that in this kind of machine. Now, there are some products that you can put in this that actually lend itself more to making that ice cream product. Now, I'm gonna say that it's probably not an ice cream, it's probably a less fat alternative, so it's a frozen dessert. And the problem too is that in a lot of these slush machines, particularly one like this, you, you can't just top it up. And when you do top it up, it liquefies the entire process. In a machine like a clear bowl, it would probably take about an hour or so to actually get down to temperature. And once you've actually extracted it all out, you'd have to put more mix in, and any mix that you put in there is gonna take another hour or so. So it's not overly practical to do it. In a full cylinder slush machine, it might take a little less, uh, but again, the higher the fat, the higher the solids, the harder that machine is going to do in order to freeze it. Now, when the product comes out of a particular unit like that, it's going to look more like a fresh whipping cream than it is ice cream per se. When you've got ice cream coming out of a soft serve machine, it's coming out at about 18 degrees. The barrel is actually rotated, scraped. You've got a nice, full, rich product coming out. Anything like this or another slush machine is basically making a higher fat or a bit of a more solid whipped cream process. So it's not going to sustain in the store. In fact, I know a lot of the places that are using those kind of products are more coffee shops and cafes rather than ice cream shops because they're trying to utilize one machine to do multiple things in their coffee shop. So it's a great question. And I'll tell you too that 
There is difficulty sometimes in running products through these machines that they weren't designed for. You can look at gelatosupply.com, talk to Itaburco, talk to Pregel, and get them to send you a sample of perhaps a product that you can add just regular milk to, because that's actually gonna freeze down a lot easier. Not as many solids, not as much fat, will freeze a little bit easier in a machine like this or in one of those uh, frozen dessert machines, slush machines that has a full barrel. When the frozen yogurt bubble started to kind of deflate, uh, four years ago, five years ago, a lot of the frozen yogurt places actually tried to run a smoothie mix through one of the barrels and they had to have the machine reconfigured because it obviously wasn't designed to make a smoothie. So anytime you're trying to run something through a machine that's not specifically designed to do so, it can be a little bit problematic. But uh, Sleepy TF, uh, if your machine does have an ice cream setting, it's not going to want to be anything over 10% fat. I'd stick to a gelato type product, something that maybe is a powder mixed with milk, maybe a 4% uh, mix, 4% fat, that basically allows that to, to freeze a little bit easier because you don't have the freezer surface in the clear bowl here. Now, there's another type of um, slushy machine which kind of looks more like a uh, frozen dessert machine where it has a full barrel or a full cylinder. That's a little bit easier to run product in, but again, you won't want to do anything over 10% because it just takes way too long for a barrel or a freezing cylinder to freeze down something that it wasn't intentionally designed to do. So I would probably go and talk to one of your um, gelato supply places. Again, Pregel, Itaburco, maybe Fabree. Talk to them about, hey, do you have any products that we could run in a slush machine that could give us a frozen dessert? And I think you should be a-okay. A lot of questions from behind the camera, peppering them this way. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you again to Dippin' Flavors. We love answering questions. So, if you look down here, you've got Dippin' Flavors down here. Looking, while you're looking down there, there's a little comment section. You can leave a comment, just say hello. We'd love to say hello to you. Uh, but while you're also down there, look, you might as well click like and subscribe. You know, you know the drill. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video.